This is a historic judgment today which will have repercussions for years to come. Our three clients are delighted. It's a great shame they're not with us today. They came to Britain to give evidence in July to the court of the appalling abuse that they had suffered. The British government has been trying to hide behind technical legal defences for three years in order to avoid any legal responsibility. This was always mor morally repugnant, and today we are very pleased that the judge has rejected their arguments as legally flawed. My name is Geto Akahengedi. I am a freedom fighter. Our aim was only to reparate Kenya and to regain our dignity. The way in which the British press portrayed Mau Mau, uh, looking back, it, it is, is almost a caricature of, of savage Africa. I remember um, visiting farmers up country who, who sat with a husband and wife with a revolver at each end of the dining table, on the table. Um, I mean, it was a very stressful period, there's no doubt about it. Savagely attacking the defenceless, burning, looting, murdering. Kenya is the battlefield of a conflict that cannot end until the Mau Mau is dissolved forever. I was getting shock after shock on those sides. It wasn't quite as plain sailing as the Times reports had made it clear. I had a father who'd been in the colonial police in West Africa, so I decided to trump him and see if uh, I could get in as a DO in East Africa. By some sort of miracle, I got through an interview of a whole lot of old fogey governors and people in the colonial office, and I chose Kenya, and I think largely because it was a place one had heard of. And sure enough, after two or three months, I found myself being summoned there urgently because of something called the Mau Mau. One of the other things, apart from sweeping in the reserves themselves, were at attempts to sweep into the forest. And I really began to start thinking, I'm going to be killing someone with this gun. No, and if I don't use it, my own people are going to say, why doesn't he use his gun? I decided that the only thing I could do would be to use um, some tracer bullets. If I shot a, a tracer bullet fairly soon on in, in these sweep, I could see how high I'd got to shoot in order to avoid killing anyone. And it was, it's clear to me now, looking back, that I was beginning I was beginning to have doubts because I didn't think these people were as wrong that I really had any right to shoot and kill them. <laughs> I joined the freedom struggle when I was 17 years old, I realized that my father and the rest of the older people who were fighting for freedom, they had a cause, a just cause to struggle for their freedom. It was portrayed as the war between civilization and savagery. In fact, it wasn't about that at all, uh, as, as more objective uh, historians now have come to recognize that there was a genuine grievance. It started as a campaign on the land issue. One of the major motivations for supporting Mau Mau 
is anti-colonialism, a hatred of colonial domination. In Kenya's case, that very much focused on the presence of white settlers who had taken land that belonged to Africans. Mau Mau movement was an organization of the people of Kenya demanding their freedom from the colonial administration. We all hold up this, the Mau Mau rebellion as, as a barbaric incident in the mythology of empire. But in fact, only 32 Europeans died during the Mau Mau rebellion. Many more Kenyans died when Mau Mau were fighting loyalists. But by far, by far, the Mau Mau came off worse. Suddenly, one morning, the DC called me. He said, you're posted to the Moya camps. So I said, what? <laughs> I knew a bit about what was going on in these camps. I wrote a letter refusing to go. Very shortly afterwards, back comes the letter. You can't say no. You have to obey orders. This is like the army. But since we think you, you, you may have misunderstood the good things we're doing, um, in these camps. Um, we're, we're sending up a Land Rover for you from Nairobi to go down and look at where we're posting you to, and you can talk to anyone there, and you can see them and see how misled you've been. We are not talking about fairy tales. We are talking about men and women who still live with us. Evidence of the victims, the, the men and women who live through that period and who bear the scars of that time. Those scars are very much a part of their everyday reality and it's completely repugnant and immoral for anybody to wish that away. We were approached by the Kenya Human Rights Commission to look into this case and they in turn had been approached by the various victim groups. So we've been considering this, looking at the evidence, we made a decision to push ahead with test cases and we selected five Kenyans who were from different communities, a mixture of men and women, and they are proceeding basically on behalf of the wider community of Kenyans who are still alive who were tortured during that period.
Kana ona ni mwenye dondo kutoa dada tawe la dada Diona ni ahidiria, leto kibidi kubira, leto leo leto kwa da yasi, mwe leto kio bato kwa leto kwa da yasi. Tule zito haki amageta wakaja Afrika ni iliuli, leko geta wakau, dada trusti. Leo leki gato gajito, leo dia gajito leo doa kuzuhu bato leo dia dia muba. Wadi di di joi di tete doa kuro di kisaka. Dua hari kau tiada yang ada di jauh bosi atau orang di dalam, kau ikat di sini ada pendak. Di sini kabi kabi boleh ikut naik ada tu. Tuan si ada di sini kita ikat kau kudu kota kau di sini aku dah bulu. Ada yang pergi kau tu curi aku kudu ikut aku kai dah bulu. Orang awak dah mai, aku aku, aku 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 aku. Di gini dah bawa no gas pun. Lepas tu aku dia hora, tu 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 ikhlas aku hora, tu ikhlas dia kiu aku. Tu ikhlas hadu tak hata ija, aku tak kohi aku. Tu ni sih doa kata, tu kebija aku no. Di aku pun dia sih kalau dia yuri aku, ya, sih kalau dia dia kebun aku, dia kiu aku, aku mahu tu kehi aku aku, itu aja. Tua kehiguru, tu kisah tu kerutuaja, ya kiu, ya kabe. Kalau tuaja, tu korang si kari si hari ni. Dia dah dia muda, kubahu dia cia orang tu, dia dah dia dah hari, dia dah rigi tu, dah rigi tu, orang dia cuci kuih tu. Leu, gigi kita, kubah udah jauh kita kuari hari ini, dah jauh kita kuyona di sebitar. Kubah sebitar, deh orang ni ada musuh kau kaku lah sih bah, tuju kau tu tu kita tu kubi, deh ni, tu kau nak gede tu, tu aje kau ni dia sih baca kalau aku, dengan ada image ke. Dia dah kau dia dah kau tu itu buku. Ni jeta wengine ni muda ni, na diu musi ni guo yuko hakuwa ni guoko, guoko diu ni kwa zi ni ala matai ndosia, kuma hindi na ndo kire na tuti de mi gonda idu tole maga kwa ndo mundo akona kingo tole ya kugura mtu. Ni 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 dari mundo wago seragi ya iri ori ame kumana goko yugoro, waga to mo mundo nake alimuru unga mili iri ota ni tu kadi kwa dai iri tu kaiga, namuru ame itu ari kita ka, ora mukuru kui ni, ni di kenda ni tiro, ni bu nai nada tiro kui ni to ni kita njukan ni tiro, kore ara ma ma kiri to isidi, to ngu to asa kuri to iri tu tu tahaga ma iku kaba ini, ogu iri tu amu iri tu amu mano ewa suka ni tiro. Adoma aide tu mahuru aku ay ayang ania no akira no mau mau no tuara kita mau mau video. Nego aku 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 harap tuli ni no aku kandung kira ini tu. Hendi ari, go tera tuara nago ego tini. Tua ni tu aku tu kiri kuda tu aleri aku go tera tahaga mai. Tua ni tu tu kiri aku nago ku handu hangi haha tu kiri he tak aku tivi. Aku ni aku kuari ku ige nak kuari hama. Aku ni ku horo ku horo ku horo. Atau ni ramah tu orang aku, ni mereka guru, tu mereka guru misalnya.
Yes, you could get a kilo, you come a key, you get a kaya. Kiragi, I get to eat you. Gawaka, I get all more than I could do her. Parasimo, like a little one and dangle to Kurunga. Nagote, the Italia to Aragon, and Gaywa Moragia. Mozo goes to give it away a hair nitty. Aka hair, you may now. Matoki, Matohore. On a mundusio, on a no mandic to marry no mandic handu, I don't mago. Didn't <laughs> Kilaja <laughs> Nasikali, Taumanga Lane. Then as ya naita to the navel, and then as I was ya. In the way, tell me, they tell me when Galene. A woman matter of wonder war, Namoi Betita to our idioka. Nasiana Zia Quasia Kilasia and Matina. Take a one Galene. That's <laughs> Mau <laughs> Elana Cone was over and is in a key at another. Naka quiver. You will learn as ye covindoca. Never ye naked nata, sibitali quacking the joy. Na Elana Vindu key and then they work a nevu can a key the work I cavicu. A camanangi to mutuanangingo. A kai cavisi. Kai cavicu. Na Elana Galile Zivitali, Siana and Yas Yona, Nasuaneazi and Amose, E Namini and Mayena, Ningi Noka Ne Nokan and Evi Yemose and Oki, Nakes in Indian and Asiana, and be any one back away. Avi Binoa, E Ambonia Kula over to a there were some ruthless people. There was one uh, a gentleman called Captain Griffiths um, who had put a machine gun on the front of his Land Rover. And he would just go around and he would literally shoot anyone who was black, 
and in front of that gun. This wasn't Oxford, it was clear. You know, it was, it was a very different sort of situation. Utaolo, with the Atiunanga, Tion and Wondo Tenanga, Quatilo, Nalico Mananga, Lia, Name Cuni, the Mananga, Mont de Macaya. Tambu Vingo, a good easy in a quagge. Natambo Vanya Rosomono, Tititi to an insect. Only it an angame vamp. Tacuno, Taumi Vivu, Kendo Tasa, Ile, Nanusu, to get a tattoo. If you are a qualo, I have a key, 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 I Tivo wa tuva kuya. Juo vome zoi, juo vome zoi kendo inda we ne ba embe. Pe kendo inda we ne. Hey, juo uyu kono wa uyosi kuenda kui kwa nyumba inge no inda iwe kita mbab. Juo kita u kita na. Ita <laughs> You now, what you know, Yoka. Committee. Air quite handy, quite a mundo, quite handy, make a lot of bow. Bunker and good and you know what I'm out. Not on the bandu, a low yoka. A quitting young play. A 
de l'eau, il y aura quoi de place. Et c'est la femme qui a dit que je suis un It is impossible for the British establishment to deny that these things actually happened. The evidence is there. In fact, there is more than sufficient documentary evidence to demonstrate, I think, probably to the legal satisfaction of courts, that atrocities were committed by named individuals within the British Colonial Service. British Jones, who was the Attorney General at the time, um, took a a group of ministers to the Muir camp concerned. And after his visit, he wrote an eight-page piece uh, which attempts to justify the kind of treatment that um, was being given in these camps. A resistor who started it was promptly put on the ground, a foot placed on his throat, and mud stuffed in his mouth, and that a man whose resistance could not be broken down was, in the last resort, knocked unconscious. This was a complete hidden setup of torture. June the 25th, 1957, Gather had, had already started beating people up in these camps, and he's now reporting him and asking for permission to repeat, to go on doing it, but they're already doing it. We can probably go further with the more fanatical Mau Mau in the way of release than we had ever hoped 18 months ago. But to do so, there must, with some be a phase of violent shock. Up until the 1990s, late 1990s, there was a general official denial in Britain that anything bad had happened. It was almost as if we'd, we'd, we'd drawn a veil across it and decided not to go there. What has happened since then is that the Mama Veterans Campaign to seek reparations has begun to probe and prod at the British establishment. The time came in June of 2009 where we decided we had enough material to file the case and the Kenyans came over for what was really quite a, a moving symbolic week. This letter was uh, uh, addressed to uh, the Prime Minister. Dear Mr. Brown, Moinga tuona kehoto nda chokaga, Moinga tuona njuguma na chokaga. We are Kenyans in our 70s and 80s who have traveled to London from our rural villages to tell the world of torture we lived through at the hands of the British colonial regime. We represent the forgotten people of Kenya whose story has finally emerged and whose cry for justice has become too deeply felt to remain unheard. We ask you, Mr. Brown, to consider our case because we are now friends. We are no longer enemies, and we would like to invite you to visit Kenya and meet our communities and families who we are so affected by the brutality of those times. They traveled all the way from their rural communities to really send the message that this was something that was very deeply felt all across Kenya. And it was from the grassroots. It wasn't just a NGO that was pushing this issue. It was really a grassroots issue. 
We like to be friends without any hidden uh, motive or feelings. Feeling that people who did wrong to us uh, recognizes that they did a bad thing. I think from the point of view of the British government, it is seen as something that might open the door to other kinds of claims, and therefore it might set an awkward and difficult precedent. From a Kenyan point of view, it's seen as a basic acknowledgement that would allow then a franker relationship to develop. To issue an apology, a sincere apology, and one that, 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 that acknowledged at least some of the worst things that had happened, would go a long way to helping our longer-term relations with Kenya in the future. They have gone to the British government, they're saying this is not about money. We're very happy to think creatively about how this can be resolved between us. Collective reparations, museums, exhibitions, um, some form of welfare fund, but we're not after big damages. That's not the objective here. The primary objective is for them to be able to have a sense that the wrong has been recognised. Thank you for coming. Um, the purpose of this is just is very quick. Um, just to update you on what's happening with our case for um, reparations for survivors of torture during the emergency period. The British government has applied to strike out claims of Kenyan victims of British colonial torture on the grounds of state succession. What the British government is saying is that they don't have any responsibility whatsoever for the acts that were committed by the uh, colonial government. So essentially they're going to argue that responsibility transferred to the Kenyan government upon the attainment of independence in 1963. They're not contesting the issue of um, the facts of the case. So maybe that's why we think they have resorted to a technical issue, because they know on the facts of the case, maybe they, they, they don't have a case. We are afraid that by seeking to invoke a legal technicality in its defense, the British government is either knowingly or unknowingly waging a war of attrition on the Mau Mau torture survivors. Early this month, one of our lead claimants, Susan Gondi, passed away. We contend that the Mau Mau torture survivors have waited already too long for justice, and the time to get justice is now. Insincere people may look to us now and say, if people are dying of old age, these people will not go beyond 2010.
The developments in the case over the past six months since November of 2010 have really been quite astonishing. I don't think anyone could have predicted uh, quite what was going to happen. Guys, stop! It has taken years for the full facts to come to light as a result of recent exhaustive research that's been carried out by professors not just in this country but also in Harvard. That research has shown the full scale and brutality of the abuse against the detainees and the fact that the paper trail in terms of what happened to them went all the way up to the colonial secretary here in the UK. The documentation I found described the shipment of a cache of documents from Nairobi between October and December 1963. Miraculously enough, the documents were discovered in the basement of Hanslow Park. It does appear to me that there wasn't any conspiracy at present to cover this up. The movement of the documents back to London then was a cover-up. It was an attempt to remove incriminating material from Kenya. A key impact of the discovery of the documents has been publicity. It's ventilated the case as nothing else could have done. And then if you all look straight into my... This is the culmination of a very long battle for these people who try to find some kind of justice. That's all. I really can't go on talking. Thank you. I'll do that. Thank you very much. It's huge. It's hugely encouraging. But at the same time, when we know that's a legal argument. The judge isn't interested in the media. He's interested in the law. So we have to stay rigorously focused on the law and the and our arguments. The judge said yesterday that the idea that liability transferred to Kenya stuck in his craw. But if that's the law, then he's going to have to find in that way. So we'll have to see what happens. going home awaiting uh, the judgment. We uh, hope that all, everything will be well because we believe that the British uh, government today is not uh, like uh, the settlers who were in Kenya at that time. I've always felt very strongly that we 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 need to to settle this thing and get it dealt with once and for all. I enrolled in 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 the British service. It wasn't in the service of anyone else. It was in the British service. I feel. I feel almost destroyed by the fact that you can keep on and on and on and on without, without creating a closure. It's time for closure. It really is time for closure. Let's go. 
trying to get hold of George. Busy, busy. Wambuga, he's calling Wambuga. Nah, yeah. So what happens now is the government are moving on to their next technical defence. They're arguing that claims are barred by the Limitation Act, which means they're saying it's out of time. Now, we've got very good arguments as to why the claims were brought so late, not least because they've been sitting on the evidence, the really damning evidence, and disclosed it at the very last minute. So we think if they fight that, we're going to win that too, uh, and then they will be faced with a full-blown trial. Claimants get their chance to tell their story in court, the past is bubbling up again. They want an apology and compensation, but they are old, so time is not on their side. Uh, Na kume vinda yundi azio kaitabe vuyingi nundu wa wa mwana. Ni wai mwana angene sova. Jisi wa kita utuma. Na kume vinda yu, jazio kaona na mundu ume. Ingi kila chende ya wa mundu ume chana angwai. Mose na kiana angwa tibia titeli. The present generation is listening and they can see the facts. They say it point blank that we are not arguing about uh, torture because we know it happened. That is great. You <coughs> Mundundeva on the Onianisa. A dinamba woman at the equator, and in the Noki Naninja and your tanga sidia. A Katiwa Matanga, so may quite take you. Go on and go Lilio or Ken and every name of Ikiaco. Put your name here, my own. They come with Amber and Yaru. Nagamaki Horomino. No do do si noa gidi rari, no gui gidi rari. Ni u mundo agidi no kui ganera na dambi engoro masa mina mundo gai dani ai todo ba mundo masi ni madi dide. We are off to Kenya today. We leave on the uh, t the 28th of uh, July. Uh, we're leaving, going back to Nairobi. It's been three weeks of hard work, three weeks of wonderful okay. commitment. How many of them can go there? I think it's true right now. Go that, that way. And that is perfect. We live on a, on a high note of optimism and we keep our fingers crossed and hope that come October the judge will be able to rule in our favour.
and I'm trying to raise it on the phone. Um, this case has been going on for many years. On a number of occasions, we have called on the government to resolve this issue speedily. We have made it clear time after time that all the victims seek is an apology and a fund that enables them to live out their lives in dignity. Following this judgment, we can but hope that our government will at long last do the honourable thing and sit down with us to try and reach that resolution. <laughs>